But here's how it begins. I'm going to show you something that is awesome. Can, can somebody come get this chair and put it over here for me? One of you gentlemen, Kevin or JJ, come help him or Kevin can do it by himself. Put this right in front of me. I'm going to show you what happens. This is very important you see this. There are three realms we live in. If you, if you get this, it'll change your life. This is the realm of the spirit of man. This is the realm of the soul of man. This is the realm of the flesh. God gave Moses the tabernacle and the pattern into the Holy of Holies. He gave him a road map into his presence. And so he said, first is the outer court. The outer court is the body. Then the holy place. That's the soul. Then the holy of holies, the spirit. When David Pomquist, get up here quick. When you are born again, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in your spirit man. He's there all the time. He, he, he doesn't leave. He's, he doesn't take vacations. He's always there. Waiting for you to know him in the spirit. I'll explain what in the spirit means in just a second. This realm is in the spirit. This realm is in the soul. This realm is in the body. Waiting upon God is a command. The Bible says, I say, wait, wait upon the Lord. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The Bible says, I wait upon the Lord all day long, all day long. The psalmist said, that waiting may very well take you all day long, but the question is how many people are willing to pay that price? On thee do I wait all the day, Psalm 25, 5. But you start waiting on your knees. And when you start waiting on your knees, it's tough. So you play some worship to help your body, sometimes it doesn't work. Because the phone rings, the dog barks, the kids come, somebody wants this, somebody wants that. You get distracted. So you need to plan your waiting time. Unplug the phone, send the kids away, get the dog locked up somewhere, and be alone with God. But when you get alone with God, you have a battle to win first with this flesh of yours. Because the flesh hates God. The flesh hates to pray. And the flesh hates to worship. And the flesh hates to praise. And the flesh hates everything about the spiritual things. All the flesh wants is fun. And food. And entertainment. And television programs. And all the garbage that it wants. But now you got to bring this flesh under subjection. You got to tell your flesh, like it lump it, buddy, you're going to pray. You're going to tell it what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 27. He said, I keep under my body and I bring it into subjection. I take that body by the throat and I say, pray. But it fights me and it struggles and it wants to win. And so the body starts to wander away in its mind. Start to think about this and think about that. And the stomach of the body begins to make noises. Because the stomach wants to have a sandwich. Boy, I'm really coming to your house, huh? And now this body of yours begins to yawn. <laughs> And it almost falls asleep. You have to wake it up. You may have to go and splash yourself or your body with some cold water to wake it up. So I give my body no choice. In the morning, I wake it up. 
I put it in the shower, clean it up, and then when it's all awake, I pray. I don't let the body tell me I'm tired and I don't feel good. I give it no excuses. Get on your knees, buddy. And I start to pray. But now when you pray, we all pray with the first realm called asking realm. Jesus said, ask, seek, knock. Those are the three realms of prayer, by the way. The asking realm is the flesh. The knocking realm, please hear this. The asking is the flesh. The seeking is the soul. The knocking is the spirit. This is something very powerful Jesus gave us. He said, ask, seek, knock. And I'll tell you about knocking in a second, but we got to get back to where we all start. Nobody starts in the spirit. We all start in the flesh. And we all start with a list of prayer. And usually that, that list is boring to God. Because he heard it yesterday. <laughs> And the list begins with, bless me, keep me, forgive me, bless my mom, bless my dad, save my loved ones, and please don't forget my dog. <laughs> Pets, whatever people pray for. They pray the same thing every day. But here's what happens, here's what happens. When they get on their knees, what they don't know is they feel no presence of God over here. Because over here, there is no God. Over here, there's no presence of God. Over here, that's the realm and domain of the flesh. And in this domain, demons operate. Demons cannot enter into that domain. That domain is free from the demonic. This domain they may enter if allowed. This they enter without your permission. Right here. For this is where the battle rages. And the battle is in the mind for the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal the mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and then it says this casting down imaginations that's in the mind and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge that's in the mind of God and bringing into captivity every thought it mentions the mind three times the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Listen to this. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And then it tells us where the battle is. It says, casting down imaginations. That's the mind. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge. That's in the mind. And bringing into captivity every thought. That's the mind. So the battle is in the mind. So you start to pray and your mind fights you. He said, Jesus, about 50 times. Father, 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 oh, help me, Father. Oh, dear Jesus, oh, I apply the blood. Hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord. You say the same thing. You think you're getting nowhere. Oh, yes, you are. Because whether you know it or not, the longer you stay, the closer you're getting. You just don't know it. You don't know you're just getting closer. And you're still saying the same old stuff. Forgive me, bless me, keep me, amen. Save my mama, save my daddy, save my brothers and sisters. Oh God, help me, I don't feel good. You say all that, all that, and you repeat yourself, you repeat. Repetition is okay in this round because in this round, it's the round of repetition and death and emptiness. God understands that part. Now let's say you've spent 45 minutes in this realm. I've spent uh, uh, sometimes two, two hours. You say, why? The longer you neglect prayer, the longer you stay here. If you spend time with God every day, you go through this thing fast. But if you don't spend time with God every, every, every day, this is a slow process. Why? Because you build up rust. As you neglect prayer, you get rusty and slow. Things aren't moving as well because the oil of the Spirit is empty and lacking in this realm over here.
You lose the oil, you see, in the flesh. There's no oil in the flesh. There's only rust and ugliness and fighting and war here. And the devil comes and talks to you here. You see, my brother and sister, you cannot hear the voice of the Lord here. You only hear it there. God speaks in the realm of the spirit, not the flesh. In the realm of the flesh, the devil speaks. Never forget what I just said. You'll not hear God over here. You'll hear the devil over here. He'll say, don't pray, you're wasting your time. And he'll remind you about all the sins you commit. He'll bring to your memory all the ugly things you've done. He'll condemn you and tell you you're going to go to hell. He'll remind you of horrible things. And this is where the mind goes crazy with thoughts. This is where the most horrible thoughts attack your mind. They, they get so bad, you wonder if you're a Christian. Come on, be real, people. This is where terrible thoughts hit your mind. This is where everything happens that is demonic and devilish. And you get attacked over and over and over and over. And you're repeating yourself with, bless me, forgive me, help me. Da -da 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 -da, the same old thing you said yesterday. But the good thing is, without you knowing it, the longer you stay, the closer you get. But here's what happens over here. Over here, you get real hungry suddenly. You're about to break through to the next realm. You just don't know it. The soul is about to take over. You just don't know it. Because from there to here, you spend 45 minutes repeating yourself, saying the same old thing and feeling so guilty about yourself and condemning yourself and believing that the devil is going to destroy you and your family and your family will never get saved. I'm wondering if God is really even listening. How many identify? Put your hand way up high. You've been there. But now, here's what some people do so sad right before they break through to the next realm they decide to go down and make a sandwich in case they to feel better now they want to fix me a massive sandwich maybe i would last longer now i let me eat something you know or they may decide to leave and check on their kids or they may decide to leave and make a phone call they've been thinking about the whole time they've been on their knees or they may have to go and look at their email to see who sent them a little email just in case they can have a little break, a little break. You do that, brother. If you have a break, ha have a sandwich, guaranteed you start from here again. You just lost 45 minutes. Because if you neglect God, you're going to go backwards. But if you're smart, you'll stay you see the whole time your body has been telling you what to do the whole time you've been wondering about this and about this condemning yourself and the devil has been attacking you bringing things to your remembrance your sins the problems the friends the emotions the struggles the garbage the chaos it's all been there in the midst of all this chaos you're saying father help me oh Jesus and then you say religious things. You become extremely religious right here. But no God. You even say hallelujah a whole lot of times. No anointing. Not even one little tear. You're as dry and dead as death itself. And all you've done is repeat yourself. And this is where you're trying to force yourself to believe that God is really listening but this is where your words have gone to the ceiling and hit you right back in the face they've gone nowhere They've just gone up and down but if you stay brother if you stay there's a line over here that's invisible between the realm of the flesh and the soul there's a line that's invisible but many Christians have broken through because the second you break through you strike reality.
you stay. Brother, if you stay. There's a line over here that's invisible. Between the realm of the flesh and the soul, there's a line that's invisible. But many Christians have broken through. Because the second you break through, you strike reality. You strike reality. Suddenly, something happens. There's a quickening inside of your soul. You've been waiting. You've obeyed God. You see, people say, well, waiting means this and waiting means that. Oh, brother, waiting means waiting. Doesn't mean anything else. Don't start, don't start misinterpreting the word of God now. Waiting on God is waiting on God. Come on, you've waited for dentists and doctors and lawyers. Can't you wait for God? Well, I don't feel a thing you're not supposed to. Well, I, there's no presence of God. He's not blind, he can see you. He's just waiting for you to break through. But when you break through, something happens. Something frankly amazing. Suddenly, it's real. My words become few and my heart becomes real. Honesty strikes my soul. I don't repeat myself here. Instead, I say, I praise you, Lord. I thank you for being so good to me. Now here, the word of God takes hold of me. Over here, all I had is thoughts running through my head and condemnation and chaos and the garbage and the stupidity and the mess and the emptiness. It's all attacked me. But over here... The promises start to bubble out of my soul. Over here, the Holy Spirit has some control, not full control. And I want to emphasize, He has some control in the soul. Because it's a process of entering in. It's a process of surrender to the Holy Spirit. And over here now, suddenly, my body is no longer tired. In fact, I'm not aware of the time anymore. Over here, I don't think about my sins and garbage. And over here, for some unknown reason, all the noise outside is not penetrating my being. Over here, I'm closing in. I'm shutting myself out. Over here, all the things of life begin to disappear into empty nothings. And over here, that worship music that I've been playing for the last 45 minutes begins to touch me real good. And now I begin to weep and I begin to cry. Tears over here are real tears. In this place is also cleansing. This is where the blood has its impact. Out there, none. I mentioned the blood up there, but I didn't even believe it washed me. Over here, I believe I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. Over here, I said, cleanse me, but I wasn't cleansed, nor did I believe it. Over here, when I say cleanse me, I said it just once. Over there, a hundred times, but no impact. I didn't even believe it. Over here, I said it once, and I accept it as done. Over there, condemnation ruled my mind. Over here, there is therefore now no condemnation. Over there, I did not believe he heard my confession of sins. In fact, I was condemning myself repeatedly. Over here, I forgot all about my sins. Here, it's becoming real by the moment. I'm still on my knees, maybe on my face. Maybe just standing or sitting. But without me knowing it, the longer I stay, the closer I get. And I am now in prayer for a good hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half, not realizing I'm about to break through. 
Now most Christians believe this is enough. Oh, no, it's not. The soulish realm is great, but it's not all of it. Here, I've broken through to the soulish realm. I've experienced liberty from condemnation, liberty from sin, liberty from chaotic emptiness and confusion, liberty even from the devil's voice out there. His voice, the devil's voice in here, is becoming more and more faint. Because the way, please listen, the way of the soul is this. The deeper you go, the lesser you hear the devil's voice out there. But over here, I begin to hear the whispers of the Holy Spirit coming from the other realm. I'm between two worlds. The devil is still whispering, but I'm ignoring him now. And Jesus begins to speak. And I begin to be drawn to him. Drawn to him. But now there's something that happens here. This is where people miss it. Over here, something happens. Listen to me carefully, please. This is the realm of repetition. This is the realm of praise. For in this realm we praise. If you walk into the holy place, it's a place of praise. Remember that the outer court is the place of blood and sacrifice. The remembrance of sins. Will the people walk in and bring to God their offerings so they may be cleansed from sin? But in there, the priests are praising Him, singing unto Him, His mercy endures forever. This is the place of praise. And so we read the words, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, not my body. The body cannot praise. Only the soul can praise. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance. He's talking to his soul. The soul begins to praise God. The soul comes up with new songs unto him. Now I'm singing songs I didn't even know out there. Now the song of the Spirit becomes reality. How many have been there? Put your hands way up high. Oh, you've been there, haven't you? Here I praise him and I magnify his name. Here I tell him how wonderful he is. But over here, something happens. Here, as I have gotten closer, without knowing I'm getting closer, but I am because the longer I've been there, the closer I got, suddenly something happens. The realms are changed. And how do I know the realm is changed? Because suddenly, I'm no longer seeking, and I'm no longer praising, and I'm no longer talking. Quietness invades my being here. The minute I cross into this realm, holy silence invades my being. I can't even talk. Because in this realm, I cannot ask. In this realm, I cannot desire. In this realm, I am knocking at his door. And how do we knock at his door? Holy silence. Silence is the most powerful knock in heavenly places. Because the word of God tells us, Be still and know I am God. When I am in this realm, something happens something recorded in the scriptures this is powerful remember what i said earlier in first corinthians 6 7 says he that is joined to the lord is one spirit in this realm something happens something so powerful most christians experience it rarely i am in the presence of the lord his presence begins to penetrate my being 
and now this happens deep calleth unto deep Psalm 42 7 at the noise of thy water spouts all thy waves and thy billows are gone over me you know what water spouts are David tornadoes I enter into a heavenly whirlwind he wraps me in his tornado that Ezekiel saw with the cherubs in it remember with heavenly flames within it the word billows are massive great rolling waves of pr the presence of God this is where the presence of God begins to penetrate my being with rays of power at that moment I no longer am praying and I am no longer praising I am communing there's communion in this realm look at me for a minute something happens here there's a scripture in the Psalms that's repeated in Hebrews chapter 2 that says this I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee When I turn to Hebrews chapter 2, I read the same scripture. It begins by saying, For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. Hebrews 2, 11 and 12. But verse 12 says this, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee do you know what this means Jesus said the father seeketh those who worship in spirit and truth do you know what it is to worship in truth To worship in truth means it is Christ-given worship. Holy Spirit breathed worship. It means, David, Jesus, when I enter into his presence, he stands up and he becomes one with me completely. One. He comes into me I come into him just like John 17 says I in them thou in me that they may be made perfect one not only is Christ in me I'm in Christ now and what happens is suddenly he begins to worship through me the Heavenly Father I am not worshiping I become the instrument of worship I am not singing, he is singing through me. Fulfilling Hebrews chapter 2 and Psalm 22. For he said himself, They, for both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren doesn't it say in the Bible we are flesh of his flesh bone of his bone we're not just one with him in spirit we're one with him in the flesh too because what happens when we bring our bodies into the Holy of Holies our bodies become truly the temple of the Holy Spirit 